Welcome to Gothic Homemaking. Today I have the privilege of having a special guest on the show, Naomi McDougall-Jones, screenwriter and actor of an upcoming vampire rom-com by the name of Bite Me. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. My name is Sarah Woods. I belong to the House of Twilight. <laughs> we are a collective of independent vampires. I'm sorry, what? We're not supernatural, obviously. We have been under investigation by the IRS, and we have just received a ruling that we are not a legitimate church. Independent vampires. Can you tell me what that is? We need to feed on energy to stay healthy. And how? We drink blood. Ooh. Who are you? My job is really boring. <laughs> Ulysses is my favorite book. I like The Bachelor. It's my favorite TV show. You're kind of a weirdo. Many real vampires hide their darker natures from people at their jobs. What is your job? I'm a kindergarten teacher. Of course you are. I thought that maybe you liked me, which was stupid, obviously. I do, I do like you. No, you don't. That first night, it was so real. It was like I knew something about you, about us. I only just met you. I know, I wasn't gonna say anything because I didn't want to sound like some lunatic stalker person. You know what? I don't care. I want to be your lunatic stalker person. You don't date for eight years. We have to go. And now, you're making eyes at that guy? <sighs> Is there a woman in your bedroom? We had sex. Do you know how much trouble I could get into? You have no idea what it is like to have people stare at me from the second I leave my house. Maybe they're staring at you because you are yelling in the middle of the sidewalk. Hello. You think that this isn't going to go the same way it always goes? No, I don't. You make me want everything I thought I was better than. Sarah! So you want to go out with me, but I have to be a secret? No, no. You just, until your audit case is closed, you just... And after the audit's over? I only just met you. Fine. Wait, you're not going to bite me, are you? We don't bite. It's not sanitary. That's right. Now, I know a bit about your film, yeah. but they don't. Can you tell the audience a bit about what it, what is Bite Me all about? For sure. It's a subversive romantic comedy about a real-life vampire and the IRS agent who audits her. The IRS agent who <laughs> audits her? Yeah. And when you say real-life vampire, do you mean somebody who cannot go out in the daylight and sleeps in a coffin? No. I mean a person who is part of the real-life subculture people who identify as vampires. I see. And drink. Human blood. And drink human blood. Yeah. Now I saw your film. I was completely blown away. I thought it was really so charming and so endearing. You know, if somebody told me they were going to make a film and the main character was going to be somebody who is living the vampire lifestyle in New York City. Yes. It does take place in New York City, yep. doesn't it? Um, it would be, and, and it was a comedy. I would expect them to really be lampooning that character, but you approached it with so much sincerity and so yeah. much time you know the film is really earnest and i think that it could have so easily gone into slapstick and parody and doesn't yeah. at all which leads me to wonder do you drink blood are you a vampire i'm not You're a not. vampire but i did a, i watched a lot of vlogs on youtube <laughs> okay of vampire vlogs and I, of which there are many a surprising number uh, that's i i can't say i'm entirely shocked yeah and i did a lot of research and i thought about trying out drinking blood because I play that character also and my husband was like no you're not doing that, that is not wow and then in the in the immortal words of uh, Laurence Olivier you were just like it's called acting yeah I'll just act <laughs> I'll just like pretend I drink blood. Like <laughs> well I really was uh, so impressed with your portrayal and now you're the screenwriter of this I film am. and you are also the star of this yep. film you play Sarah mm -hmm. the lead character um, so if you're not a vampire and you don't drink blood, what would possess you to want to write a rom-com about somebody who's living life as a vampire? Yeah. Well, so my initial impulse was that I wanted to figure out how to update the rom-com, right? Because I love the rom-coms of the 80s and 90s a lot, like when it was good. You know, like Notting Hill, When Harry Met Sally, like the good days of the rom-com. Uh, but I realized that you couldn't... Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 
but we live in a very cynical time now and those movies don't really play anymore because they functioned on this like giddy freewheeling optimism of the 80s and 90s, right? So I was trying to figure out, okay, so how do you make a rom-com where you can still watch characters fall in love, you can still have your heartstrings pulled and like all this, but how do you meet an audience where they are in terms of being very cynical about love, cynical about the world? And so when I met a woman who told me she was a real vampire, I... And where, where did you meet a real vampire? On the set of Boardwalk Empire. <laughs> on the, wait, on the set of Boardwalk yeah, Empire? Yeah, she was one of the extras. Okay. Yeah. And she was living life as a vampire in New York City? Yeah. And so I had never heard about this before and I was fascinated and instantly wanted to make a movie about it. And then I realized you could combine those two things because if she, if my character enters the movie as a vampire, as cynical about love and the world as the audience is, then you can have them go on that journey rather than just clobbering them over. She is cynical. She is super I will cynical. say like, you know, the, the, as the film started, I thought like, wow, okay, she's got a real chip on her shoulder. But you, you start to really get to know her and it all yeah. makes sense. Um, there is a couple of people in the film that we've heard of before, that yeah. we've seen in other things. Yeah. Do you want to tell me sure. about them? So, um, the guy who plays the IRS agent, opposite Who's me, so cute. Who's adorable. He's adorable. Kind of heart melting. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, he played Tom Riddle in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets which, as a giant Harry Potter nerd, was extremely exciting for me, personally. <laughs> uh, what, what house are you? Gryffindor. Of course. Yeah. Just check. Uh, <laughs> what house are you? I'm not going to say. I don't <laughs> guess. I think um, you can guess. <laughs> as he sips his dragon wine. And then we have Naomi Grossman, who played Pepper on American Horror Story. Right. And we have uh, Annie Golden, who is a legend, but also is an orange, is the new black. The guy who plays the king of the vampires in the movie. So there's a vampire... Uh, his name is... Stas. Stas, right. So there's several vampire houses in the movie, but he is the king of the biggest house in New York. So he, in the movie, a plot, a very important plot point is that he is a tattoo artist. And so we were casting this role and we realized, shit, this guy's got a, gonna have to have a lot of tattoos, because what tattoo artist do you know that doesn't have a ton of tattoos? Right. But it's very expensive to put fake tattoos It'd on It'd be people. like that vegan chef who specializes right. in steaks. <laughs> right. you, don't make, you don't eat at that restaurant. It wouldn't make any sense. No. So we were sort of sweating this out, and then Antino Crowley, Kevin Wati, who plays that character, walked into the audition room and he was tatted his entire head, face, body, everything with piercings, and we were like, please be a good actor. <laughs> please be a good actor. Well, and he was. He's great. He's great. Because just as your character is so realistic to somebody who identifies as a blood-drinking vampire in New York City, and just as the IRS agent is so realistic as somebody who's like, everything's by the book, he really embodies the vampire king personality. <laughs> he really does. Yeah, he. I know amazing. a lot of vampire kings. <laughs> I know more vampire kings than I should probably. I've certainly met more since meeting you. Yeah, well, yeah. it's the, I rolled in that crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Speaking of crowds, so we were introduced by a colleague, <laughs> a mutual colleague, uh, entertainment lawyer by the name of Jonathan Gray. Yes. And I believe he lied to you about me. What was it that he said? No, no, he didn't lie, but so this, you know, he, 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 was our, you, he was our entertainment lawyer. Right, but he told you that I was what? The king of the gods. Right, that's a lie. I'm not is, the king you're of not the, the king no, of the gods? No. Well, what, what are we doing the here? The king of the gods is Peter Murphy. <laughs> Um, now, granted, he did crown me in Transylvania oh. a thousand years ago, the Clown Prince of Goth. Everyone oh. knows that. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been operating under false pretenses this entire time. That was very kind of him to say. That was very kind of him. He was being kind. Oh. Um, but we met before you started shooting. Yes. I was very intrigued by your film. And we, we all went to uh, Death & Company yes. down the street from here. Very for on brand. Yes, very on <laughs> brand. I wanted to make sure I was like sending a message. If you were going to ask me questions about the vampire scene, like I knew what I was talking about. Right, so I took you to a high-end cocktail bar because that has anything to do with vampires. Um, but we went there and I was really impressed that your core group and all of the people at like the, you know, the highest levels of decision making in the film are all women. All women. I thought Some that was really cool. Badass women. Yeah, it is really is, cool. It's do, very unusual. Is it, in the I film was just—that was my question. Is yeah. that unusual? Oh, 
super unusual. So only 5% of films are directed by women. Really? Yeah. And to have a female producer and director and writer is like, it's like a radical feminist act. On my first film, we had the same setup, oh, yeah. slightly different women, but all women. And we got told in a professional business meeting that we needed a man to get a man on board so that people would trust us with their money. Wow. Just out loud. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you should know that any relationship I've ever been in, the woman was the one who was fisc fiscally responsible. Yeah. So, I don't know where that comes from. But <laughs> so, that's, 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 wow, um, that's like straight up heinous. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Now, you know, you and I were talking recently, and you said that you, you speak publicly on the topic of feminism. Yeah, women in film. Women I'm, in film. I'm getting, well, I'm straying a little. Women in film. Yeah. So, I did a TED Talk that went viral about oh, this, cool. actually. And then I've been invited to speak all over the world about it. But basically, my point is, women are 51% of the population, and yet only 5% of films are directed by women. So films, and only a third of the people on screen are women in movies. And that's true of leads, supporting characters, and crowd scenes. And I think it's safe to assume that it's not because women don't want to direct films. No. It's not because women don't want to be in films. Right. So there Definitely must be some, not. Must be some must other be reason. Some, some other reason. Well, I was just going to say, how can we change that? But I think you're already doing it. Yeah, you make movies. You make movies. That's yeah. how you change it. Yeah. So, if I may... And yeah? you support women who do make movies. And how, how... You go see their movies. Go see their movies. Yeah. So, what's your advice? for young female filmmakers who, who believe that maybe they don't have a shot at breaking into the business. Uh, do it on your own, because it is going to be harder for you, and you're going to have to be braver, and you're going to have to work harder, and you're going to have to find ways around the system, because they're not going to pick you. Same is true if you're like a goth dude in his 50s. I, you know, I don't... I, you know, I don't even bother thinking like anybody's going to pick up my show. I just make my show. Yeah, but I you just, are an amazing example of this. Well, you just, have built an ecosystem unto yourself. In the immortal words of Lloyd Kaufman, make your own damn movie. Just make your own damn movie. Yeah. Now, speaking of people supporting female filmmakers and going out to see their film, can I tell the audience this film is coming to a town near you? Like, yes. How, what, what, is, what is the distribution model here? So we are disrupting the distribution model and bringing the film directly to our fans all over the country. So we are going like on a, a tour? 51 screening, 40 city, three month joyful vampire tour of America. Uh, we're probably coming to a city near, near you, but if we're not, you can also watch the film on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon, and Seaman Spark. iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon, and when when is it available on those platforms? May 7th. May 7th. And the tour starts May 6th in New York City. May 6th in New York City, and I'm going to list all of the tour dates in the video description below, so please take a look, and if this, I'm telling you, if you watch my goofy show and you think it's entertaining, you're going to love Bite Me, because it's, it was a, like, I laughed and I cried kind of film. I lulled a lot. I laughed out loud a lot. And we're having joyful vampire balls after almost every screening. You are? Yeah. So after the screening, there's a party? And wear a costume? Yes, people are invited to wear whatever makes them feel the most joyful, which can be vampire related or not. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I wonder what's the one. I'm going to want to see pictures of that. Uh, so, who's coming on tour with you? Uh, so, me, my husband, and a documentary filmmaker who's making a documentary web series about the entire tour. Is your husband into the vampire thing? No, he's from New England. <laughs> are you going to make him wear a cape? I'm working on it. It's a tough set. <laughs> it's a tough set. <laughs> what does he do? He's a classical violinist. Oh, all okay. right. So first of all, you know I love the violin, uh, and I love classical violin. But there's, if there's anything I know about classical violinists, is they all own tuxedos. That is a very good point. And you know what, fellas, if you own a tuxedo, you're three quarters of the way to a Dracula costume. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. You can't really go Just wrong with a tell tuxedo. Tell him tux. Yeah, that's a good idea. So you're making a documentary along the way. Yeah because nobody has ever done exactly what we're doing in terms of releasing the film with this exact strategy. So what we're going to do is we're going to be honest and share everything with everybody about how it goes, which A, will be really fun because we're driving around the country in an RV for three months, <laughs> dressed, dressed like vampires, and then also we're going to share with people like how it's going. And if it's going really well, we'll tell them, and if it's going terribly, we'll tell them that too. 
I think, you know, I don't want it to go terribly, but the moments, I can tell you from my own career as a touring musician that the moments that are terrible are kind of the most hilarious. Oh, yeah. And they're the ones you remember the most. I'm sure. So, I wish you so much luck. Thank I you. I think that's fantastic. I, I've interviewed a vampire. Maybe we can work that into your web series somehow. Please. Please. All right, maybe we'll work that in somehow. Okay. Now I'm going to poke a hole in your, in your film. I want to ask you a question. Now, we're here at the Lair of Voltaire. You're looking around. You see that the Lair of Voltaire is about 10 feet by 11 feet. And I do okay for myself. So I want to ask you, why is it that in, <laughs> in movies about New York City, when people don't have two nickels to rub up against each other, they live in a loft that's so big you could roller skate from one end to the other? I know. What's with that? Well, there's two very practical reasons for this. <laughs> I, I figured as much. One is that you've got to fit an entire film crew into an apartment for many days. So right there you have to have a bigger apartment. Like you, It'd be very hard to shoot a movie in the Lair of Voltaire, although it would be amazing. <laughs> uh, and the second thing is we had a smaller apartment and we lost our location in the first week of shooting and we had to scramble to find another one. Uh -huh. And yeah. we found an amazing, beautiful apartment that's much too nice for our characters to own. Yeah, that's, that was one thing about the film. I was like, why is their I apartment know. 20 times I the know. size of mine? <laughs> Your film it revolves around a, a group of vampires who are a church, and they're having their tax-exempt status questioned. questioned and investigated by the IRS. And uh, ironically, the, the Temple of Satan just got their tax exempt status. Did you hear about that? I did, and it made me feel very topical. It did? Yes. So it, it was a blip on the radar? Yeah, well, but I had researched this. Stephen Colbert did this amazing segment about how, or John Oliver, about how easy it is to register as a church. And really? it's like hmm. ridiculously church easy. Church of Gothic Homemaking. Yes. I think you def certainly, if this is not a church, I don't know what is. <laughs> it's more like a. It's more like a hobble. <laughs> it's like a well-decorated hobble. One of the two. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, have you seen the, the film, Hail Satan? Not yet, but I'm it's excited a, it, to. It's a great yeah. documentary. I also suggest you check that out. It's very thought-provoking. It's really, really thought-provoking. Yeah. And it's very topical to what your, yeah. what your f film is about. I wish you so much success. I, I, I can't say it enough. I am going to put the dates in the video description. I have seen this film. And I was completely blown away by how wonderful and beautiful, endearing, charming, and honest, and funny it is. So I highly recommend that you see it. Thank, thank you, Naomi, so much thank you. for being here. Thank you. And thank you for making a great film for all of us to enjoy. Thanks for having me. See you next time on Gothic Homemaking. <laughs>